Hello, my name is Mac Wagner, and today I'll be presenting DP2. I'm a member of Team 13. I had the pleasure this semester of working with Elton Liu and Ben Bartich on the Hokie Switch. Um, so just a brief overview of what I'm going to cover today. We're going to go over some of the foundational topics, and then we're going to go into a functional decomposition of the product, concept generation, as well as the results of the gallery method and how we ended up selecting a final concept. Okay, so first we're gonna go through the mission statement. So the goal of the Hokie switch is to make Virginia Tech students more efficient. It's a light switch adapter that is placed over a pre-existing light switch that it can be used with a Bluetooth device to turn on or off a light switch, which would make life much easier for a lot of students and save a lot of energy. So now moving on to the customer profile, um, the target audience was VT students in general, both those living on and off campus. Um, the goal is to cut unnecessary wasted time, which can be extremely beneficial for college students. So there, it's a fairly wide base of customers that we can reach. Um, the use case, this most oftentimes is gonna be used either late at night when a student's studying and doesn't wanna leave their bed and then have to run back into bed without running into any sort of obstacles that may lie in the way. And then on the same token, it'll be used early in the morning when a student wakes up and they don't wanna to have to bump into anything that may have been placed somewhere or moved last night that they don't remember and resulting in some sort of injury or damage to something within their room. All right, so then there's customer needs. Um, the main customer needs had to do with reliability, ease of use, price, physical design, as well as safety. So target specifications, the three most important are bolded, the fastening method, um, successful performance after repeated use, and installation time, and then price is obviously always something we focus on. All right, so now going into the functional decomposition. So there were three different functions we mainly focused on when we were looking at this product. So the first was the control method, the second was the method of connection to the wall, the third was the power supply. So these three sub-functions we found to be crucial to the Hokie light switch. So we had four different ways to control the Hokie light switch. The first would be a remote using Bluetooth connect, or sorry, would be a remote that would have a button on it that would just be like a um, fan switch where it'd be on off with one button. There was also a consideration of using a motion sensor where if there was motion in the room, that would turn the light on or off depending on what the current position was. Then there's voice activation using something like Alexa, pairing Alexa with the Hokie switch um, and then there's a Bluetooth connectivity option where you would use any sort of Bluetooth capable device, whether it's a computer, smartphone, tablet, the list of Bluetooth devices is extremely long. So just about everybody has a Bluetooth device that would be able to operate the Hokie switch if that was the decision. So then this switch needs to be somehow fastened to the wall, to the pre-existing light switch because we decided we didn't want to go into any electrical parts because that could void some students' housing contracts and things like that. So we looked at magnets, we looked at screws, and we looked at an adhesive connection. Um, so magnets, we would just use strong neodymium, neodymium magnets that would be um, connected via adhesive to the Hokie switch, and then it would connect to the wall that way, um, screws would, we decided to end up going with the magnets because we thought that would be the least destructive to somebody's dorm room or condo, or sorry, apartment, and that would be the goal of this product is to make it so the owner, the landlord, would never know that that product was even there. Um, then the final consideration was the power supply, so there were three options. We went into batteries, a hand crank, as well as connection to a um, wall outlet. We ended up choosing the battery method because we thought that adding more wires is something that really college students don't ever wanna do. 
Um, and then you go into a hand crank that obviously defeats the whole purpose of it. Having to crank it up before you use it would kind of defeat the whole um, ease of the Hokie light switch. And then, um, so we ended up choosing batteries. Um, there's some challenges that come with batteries in terms of when they have to be replaced, but we decided that was ultimately the best choice. So here we have our gallery method, and so we got six different um, combinations of products here. So we have the remote, the screws, and the outlet in picture one here. We have the Bluetooth, magnet, and batteries here in picture two. Picture three shows a voice-activated system with magnets and batteries. Um, picture four here shows Bluetooth, adhesive, and batteries. Picture five here is Bluetooth, screws, and a hand crank. And picture six here is gonna be Bluetooth with screws and batteries. All right, so as you can see here, we had them broken down all the different components of the three different subfunctions. And so now they're listed out here. I think it's easier to see, um, to look at some of the details in this view. So we went into concept scoring, and so there were three designs that we picked for, that we gave serious consideration to. So design two was the Bluetooth, the magnet, and the batteries. Um, then there was design four, which was Bluetooth adhesive and batteries. And then design one, which was a remote, screws, and an outlet connection. So you can see here, we went through and did some concept scoring. So the way it works, you take a rating, one through five, five being the highest, one being the lowest, multiply it by the weight, and you end up getting um, scores for each of the concepts. So we had a 3.95 for design two, 330 for design four, and a 320 for design one. So we ended up going with design two since it scored the highest. So that's the um, concept we desired, decided to develop further. So like I've said, um, we went through, and so the control method, we decided Bluetooth would work best. Um, it's extremely popular. It's used in a lot of different devices. So the connectivity would be very wide across basically any household electronic device. Um, and so you, all that's needed for that is our Arduino switch and motor. Um, then the connection method of magnets, um, we believe that that would be the most convenient for a user. There's no use for extra tools um, that a lot of students don't have on campus. Um, and they're very inexpensive and there'd be no damage done to any sort of hardware within the room. And then power supply, we decided to go with batteries. That's because they're the most um, portable power supply method. It's easy to plug in batteries in and out. Batteries are everywhere around us. Um, and it's also requires the least amount of user input. Obviously the hand crank would be a lot more work and effort from the user. And if we had the um, power outlet that could take up a wall spot that could have been used for a different device. Um, so now we're gonna go into the FMEA, failure modes and effects analysis. Um, so we had four potential sources of failure, which had to do with the power supply, motor function, connection to the wall, and connection to the switch. Um, so you can see here we had relatively low scores, the highest being 21 having to do with the motor function. That would be if there was somehow an error and the motor went the wrong way. So if it was in an on position and tried to go up from there or in a down position and tried to go down there, there'd be potentially damage done to the motor, which would be obviously something that could potentially ruin the product. Um, so, and then we had a score of 15 for the connection to the switch. Um, if for some reason the magnets were not made strong enough, that would, that would have a severe impact on the product because the, wall, the adapter falling off the wall would do probably some serious harm to it. So two possible modifications to address those problem areas would be equipping the switch with a light that blinks to communicate some sort of motor malfunction, um, as well as installing some higher strength magnets to make sure that the connection to the wall is secure.